iPhone 15 Pro versus iPhone 16 Pro. That's the question. Should you upgrade to the latest and greatest 16 Pro or get a slightly discounted 15 Pro now that the new iPhone is out? That's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to go over every difference between the 15 and the 16 Pro models so that you know what you're getting into with each of these phones. Let's start with the outsides of the phones and then we'll move inside the first and most obvious change is around the display maybe you've noticed or maybe you haven't but the bezels around the display of the 16 Pro are 30% smaller than the 15 Pro is it a huge difference. Not really but it does help the 16 Pro look just a touch newer or more modern. The display is also slightly bigger now at 6.3 inch instead of 6.1 more screen real estate is never a bad thing but people with small hands might be a little bit annoyed that even more of their screen is out of reach. This year the phone has gotten a few millimeters bigger and a few grams heavier. Not enough to be a nuisance in my opinion but if you hold them both in your hand you can feel the weight difference ever so slightly both phones have the ceramic shield glass front and back but Apple claims that the 16 Pro ceramic shield is stronger this year for better toughness both phones have. Titanium frames as well but the iPhone 16 Pro has the new camera control button on the side. This 16 Pro has a new color too, it's called Desert Titanium. I'm not sure how many different shades of gold Apple can give the Pro line up but they do manage to make it sound cool every time. This one is a bit more of a cross between sand and rose gold. Fingerprints are fairly well hidden too even on the frame where it is a little bit glossier. Now moving inside the phone let's talk about performance the 16 Pro comes with the new 8 Pro chip whereas the 15 Pro has the 17 Pro chip. Do I expect there to be a huge difference between the two in practical everyday use? Absolutely not I did run Geekbench 6 on both of them and it appears as though the A18 Pro is the winner surprise but I don't think it really matters at the end of the day I was really hoping for some better battery. Life on this 16 Pro though my 15 Pro still has 99% of its battery health thank you for adding charging limits Apple and I was getting around 4 to 4 and 1 half hours of screen on time before needing to charge up which is obviously not that great. Some of the recent teardowns claim that the 16 Pro has a 3582 amp hour battery which is almost 10% in size bigger than the 15 Pro. Another improvement is in charging at least on the wireless side of things the charging speed has been bumped up on the 16 Pro this year to 25 watts on a MagSafe charger compared to stop at to last year's 15 watt charging via the USB-C port should be about the same though. Ok let's talk cameras that's where a lot of the improvements went this year for starters the ultra wide camera is now 48 maps to match the main camera that's up from 12 map on the 15 pro that means sharper more detailed ultra waist and better macro photo and better macro photo see since the ultra wide is used. For close up shots the telephoto is now 5x instead of 3x but it's still sitting at 12 megapixels so shots from the telephoto end aren't going to be as sharp as the other two cameras on the 16 pro. On the video side of things the iPhone 16 Pro can now shoot 4K video at up to 120 frames per second instead of 60 on the iPhone 15 Pro can still shoot at 120 frames per second slow-mo but it's at 1080p instead of 4K. It might be niche but that's a really cool thing to have on a phone you usually have to have much bigger dedicated cameras or at least action oriented cameras to get that. If you have a 15 Pro you'll be happy to know that you're not missing a whole lot and that you shouldn't upgrade to the 16 Pro however if you have an older phone and you're looking to upgrade should you spring to the 16 Pro or should you look for a discounted 15 Pro well for me I wasn't entirely happy with the battery on my 15 Pro I was getting on average like half the screen time as my S24 Ultra before having to charge up again. The 10% increase in battery capacity on the 16 Pro is definitely a welcome upgrade but the rest of it I mean there's some nice to haves for sure. But I could probably do without all of it. Personally I'd rather take a couple hundred bucks in my pocket with the discounted 15 Pro over the new 16 Pro but that's just me. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Hope you like the video. Thanks for watching and as always have a great day.